coming up on BCN Today. Blair Moore RCMP involved in a shooting that leaves a man dead. Plus, a Canada-wide warrant issued for a man involved in Lethbridge's first homicide. And pipeline supporters protesting arrests of Wet'suwet'en members block the BC legislature. Your Canada. Your Southern Alberta. Your stories. From our studios in the heart of Lethbridge, it's BCN Today with Jeanette Roche. Hello, thank you for joining us. Two Blairmore RCMP officers were involved in a shooting last night after attempting to initiate a traffic stop in the parking lot of the home hardware store in Blairmore. A confrontation occurred which resulted in the discharge of service pistols. The vehicle traveled a short distance and then entered a ditch. The male driver was located and he was later pronounced dead. The two RCMP members were not injured. The Alberta Serious Incident Response Team will investigate the circumstances surrounding the shooting and the actions of police. In other news, charges have been laid in a motor vehicle collision on University Drive after a man fled the scene of the accident. It happened last evening at around 6.20 p.m. between Bridge Drive and Highway 3 on University Drive. Police spoke to uh, witnesses who followed the man that was running away from the scene, and he was located a short time later lying down in a field just east of Burnco. The driver of the second vehicle was trapped in the vehicle, and he was transported to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The 2017 Gray Dodge Ram involved in the accident was confirmed to have been stolen sometime yesterday. Various documents found inside the truck not belonging to the registered owner were later determined to be stolen as well. 25-year-old Joshua Ryan MacArthur faces several charges and is scheduled to appear in court March 26th. Lethbridge police have issued a Canada-wide warrant for the arrest of a 29-year-old man charged in connection with the city's first homicide in two years. Mohamed Omar Diblawi of Toronto is charged with one count of second-degree murder in connection with the shooting death of a 35-year-old man last Thursday night at a home on University Drive West. On February 6, 2020, just after 10.30 p.m., police responded to a report of a shooting at a residence in the 200 block of University Drive West. Upon arrival, officers located the body of a 35-year-old male inside the home. The male's body was transported to the Calgary Medical Examiner's Office, where an autopsy confirmed the manner of death being homicide. The identity of the victim will not be released. And as mentioned in earlier uh, media release, it was determined through our investigation that this was a targeted incident, and the parties involved were known to one another. Information obtained by our investigators also alleges a verbal dispute surrounding the illicit drug trade, uh, occurred between the victim and the accused, which resulted in the victim being fatally shot. Alberta Health Services could be privatizing laundry services across Alberta, including Lethbridge's Chinook Regional Hospital. The Alberta Union of Provincial Employees says it received written notice from AHS on Monday that they're considering sending out a request for proposal in May for a private linen contract and could be awarding the contract to begin in November. According to AUPE Vice President Susan Slade, that could mean 275 workers in 54 communities, including... 35 jobs in Lethbridge. Not only does it affect um, our membership in their jobs, but it also affects rural Albertans, and, and especially in Lethbridge and Medicine Hat as well. Once you start taking away the jobs, that also takes away from the economy within the communities that they live in. Uh, rural Alberta, you know, small towns, sometimes these are the biggest employers is AHS, obviously. AHS says the outsourcing is in response to one of the many suggestions in the recent review done by Ernst & Young to improve Alberta's health care system. Via rail passengers and a growing number of businesses, uh, business groups rather, are urging the government to end rail blockades in support of opponents of the Coastal Gas Link Pipeline project. Via Rail has canceled passenger service on its Montreal, Toronto and Toronto, Ottawa routes because of a blockade near Belleville, Ontario. CN Rail is warning it will be forced to close significant parts of its freight work unless blockades impeding its, linen, its lines rather, are removed. The Canadian Chamber of Commerce is calling on all levels of government and police to work together to bring an immediate end to the blockades and to restore all rail service. 
Meantime, hundreds of anti-pipeline supporters protesting the arrests of people in the Wet'suwet'en traditional territories in Northwest BC blocked entrances to the legislature in Victoria Tuesday. The legislature was set to resume sitting with a throne speech. This is the power of when we have the truth on our side and when our supporters and allies and Canadians and British Columbians realize this is not an issue that's only dealt with by Indigenous peoples, but we're all implicated in this province and country together! I'm here to support my people and the Wet'suwet'en people in their fight to prevent the pipeline and to help them in their fight against the Canadian government. The number of new cases of the novel coronavirus in China has trend, uh, trended lower in the past week. China's National Health Commission said 2,015 new cases were counted yesterday. The second straight daily declined and down from nearly 3,900 a week ago. In Japan, 39 new cases were confirmed on the Diamond Princess cruise ship quarantined at Yokohama bringing the total to 174, including eight Canadians. It's not clear if any Canadians are among the newly confirmed cases. Meanwhile, a husband and wife from central Alberta say they're happy and relaxed while being quarantined aboard a cruise ship docked outside of Tokyo. Lolita and Hans Weisner of Red Deer were to disembark last week after a 29-day cruise and planned a tour of Europe when the quarantine was announced. A total of 100, 135 people, including eight Canadians aboard the ship, have contracted the new form of the coronavirus that's killed over 1,000 people and infected more than 42,000 others, mostly in China. The ship's 3,700 passengers and crew are expected to remain under quarantine until at least February the 19th. Nearly 200 evacuees are ending a two-week quarantine at a Southern California military base where they've been living since flying out of China in the wake of the deadly viral outbreak. None have tested positive for the coronavirus. We want to make sure, though, that you understand there should be no concern about novel coronavirus from these 195 individuals. They have been watched more closely than anyone else in the United States at this point in time. These people were tested sometimes multiple times, had thermometers pointed at their forehead twice a day, filled out all manner of questionnaires and remained within the cordoned area. They have done everything we've asked them to do and more. And now it's time for us to keep our end of the bargain. Today, as we uh, took off our masks, sorry, and uh, we're, we're given a clean bill of health, uh, we all realized that uh, we had gone through this experience together and uh, we made good friends. Uh, we kept ourselves busy. Uh, we, one of our uh, staff did a Zumba class. We, we, we had uh, trivia games. We, uh, there, we had a, a master artist who, was, who gave uh, art classes. Uh, uh, the kids had a school. It, it, was, it was, we tried to do as normal of, of, of a life as we could. A spokesperson for the Center for Disease Control in the U.S. says they now have 13 confirmed cases of the virus in the states. The goal of the agency is to delay the arrival of separate cases, slowing the spread of the virus. We do not have widespread transmission here in the United States, and we are currently operating under a strategy of trying to delay the arrival of individual cases and to slow the spread of cases should they Occur. We um, wish that we could tell you exactly what the next few weeks and months will mean. Our current strategy is, is really um, a containment one focused on our borders and focused on intense evaluation around each confirmed case. Uh, contact tracing, uh, prompt identification if they develop symptoms, evaluation of the uh, possibility of coronavirus. But, um, with large-scale spread as is occurring in uh, Hubei province, the strategies often need to change. So we're, um, we'll be looking ahead at how to prepare for a worsening situation. From 
cyberbullying to use social networking, each year Safer Internet Day aims to raise awareness of emerging online issues. Lethbridge Police and the Lethbridge Sexual Violence Action Committee have called on everyone to help prevent child luring. BCN's Loris Alexander has more on what parents should be aware of as organizations gear up to make the internet a safer place. Sexual predators have found an easy access point into the lives of young people. They meet them online through video games and apps, making virtual connections right in their victims' homes. Uh, websites, there's games, there's things that can have heavy influences, and we have other people that have other motives on how they want to connect with kids. Many of the interactions lead to crimes of sextortion, in which children are coerced into sending explicit images of themselves. We do hear some things about uh, the concerns about uh, some sexting and around uh, uh, people wanting to share in images or the pressure to share uh, sexualized images and it being very commonplace uh, for especially young girls to be asked to share uh, intimate photos of themselves. Amanda Todd was one of those young girls. A Dutch man had sexually extorted the BC teenager before he convinced the then 12-year-old Todd to flash herself. Children and youth, we have to look that there's a lot of vulnerabilities that come with that because we often question who we are as we're growing up. We uh, want to be liked. We want to have friends. And even as adults, we want to have friends. We want to be liked. That's why dating sites do so well. So how can parents best navigate gaming and other online activity that expose children and teens to sexual predators? The best app you can ever have is yourself and that face-to-face -face interaction with your kids. Christine Cassie wants to empower parents to know that they can control access and should always exert that control. Our role as parents is to be responsible. We've chosen to have these little darlings. We need to deal with them and we need to help them explore the world in some different ways that that's really healthy for them. And really empathy is one of the biggest things we can teach. We read face to face with them so they can learn those looks on our face and learn the intonation of when we're angry, when we're happy, when we're sad, when we're happy, all those things. Um, this is important skills for us to teach our kids. For Bridge City News, I'm Loris Alexander. Thank you, Loris. Woods Homes is a nonprofit group which has been helping children in distress since 1917. Shauna Cohen is the group's program manager in Lethbridge. She stopped by our studio recently and we asked her what some of the most difficult situations are that they deal with when it comes to kids. Difficult situations are when we have young people who come to us with not one stable adult in their life um, and when we have to assist them in finding family natural supports, but that is a service that we do provide is family finding. Um, also young people who have experienced severe trauma, that is very difficult to hear and, and see young people going through those things. Catch the full interview with Shauna Cohen from Woods Homes explaining the unique ways that they help kids in crisis. That's coming up in the second half of our show. The need for a new Indigenous Cultural Centre was discussed at City Council this week. Perry Stein, who's the city's Indigenous Relations Advisor, says the goal of the centre is to be a safe place for people to come together and take part in Indigenous culture. We felt it was important on this project to actually design engagement with the community. Uh, this is a community initiative uh, coming out of work that's been done by the urban indigenous community. Um, so it was important for us to actually spend some time with the community, um, urban indigenous organizations, local businesses, arts and culture sectors, but also our partners in the region, the Blackfoot Confederacy Nations, understand their needs and opportunities for, for an agricultural center. Stein says we should know more about funding for the center by the spring of next year. The province announced that it's tabling the budget on February 27th. The new budget will provide an update on the government's fiscal and capital plans. Finance Minister Travis Taves says the government consulted more than 30,000 Albertans through telephone town halls and an online survey. He says more than 26,000 people provided feedback as to where our tax dollars should go. The February 27th date will allow for debate at the legislature and a plan to pass the budget before the end of the fiscal year. Police in the United Kingdom say the 39 people found dead in a shipping container in southeast England last October died of a combination of lack of oxygen and overheating. The victims were Vietnamese and ranged in the age from 15 to 44. The 31 men and 8 women are believed to have paid human traffickers to bring them to England. 
And check this out. Dramatic new video shows several angles of a police chase along the route of last week's Super Bowl parade in Kansas City. Two people were arrested following the chase through downtown. Yep, 690 is coming up on uh, Independence Avenue here. All right, they're over I-70, uh, currently stopped for a moment. Nope, they're backing up, guys. Watch the crossfire if there is any. They're going to reverse on the bridge. We have reached on Tim Patch. Down on the north side of the bridge, guys. Hey, we got information there could be a kid in the back seat. It's Pershing, there are pedestrians on all sides. If we could box it in, I would say it would maybe the time. Cruiser 1, permission to anyone needs to take that car out, take it out. Guys, if we can get a car behind it, I know we got to watch Crossfire, but let's not let it out of there. It is still stationary at this point. We're in between Maine and Grand on Pershing here. Two police officers were wounded and a gunman was killed Monday when a gunfight broke out at a Walmart in eastern Arkansas. Uh, officers engage the suspect. The suspect is deceased. Two of our officers have been injured, but it's due to their heroism and quick response that no civilians were injured. In the early morning hours around 1024 a.m., our department did get a, receive a phone call from Walmart stating that they had an individual inside uh, making threats, um, kind of talking out of, out of his head. Officer um, responded to that call, um, approached the suspect, and um, from there we had an um, incident where we had two of our officers injured and the suspect um, killed. The U.S. Coast Guard says nearly 20,000 pounds of cocaine were seized in the eastern Pacific Ocean and brought to San Diego. The cocaine was seized in eight operations over the past two months. So today, we're surrounded behind me here with 20,000 pounds of uncut cocaine worth almost $350 million. It's the result of eight different high seas interdictions in the Eastern Pacific Ocean, carried out by four different Coast Guard cutters from November to January. Along with the contraband, 26 suspected smugglers were detained and brought forward for prosecution. Uh, and for the first time on this patrol, we were underway with a small unmanned aerial system a drone, um, a tremendous force, force multiplier. It proved that as advertised. While we were all enjoying family and friends during the holiday season, this crew is underway in the deep eastern Pacific, pushing our U.S. borders out thousands of miles, establishing our sovereignty and protecting our national security. We are grateful for that. Well, we've got mainly cloudy skies with a 60% chance of flurries this morning, but tomorrow we should see some sunny skies again. A complete look at the weather picture is coming up right after the break. Stay with us. And welcome back. Here's a look at our weather highlights for today and tomorrow in Lethbridge. Today we are expecting a 60% chance of flurries and it should be clearing up later on today. The high is minus 6 today and minus 12 the overnight low. Into tomorrow we're going to see a high of 6 degrees as it climbs into the plus range with lots of sunshine. Sunshine also expected for Friday and Saturday with highs of 3 and 5 on those days. It's going to de decline a little bit for Sunday with a chance of flurries again. Minus 2 is the high. Two degrees is the high for Monday and five for Tuesday with scattered clouds and lots of sunshine again on Tuesday. So the almanac highs and lows for the averages this time of year, they're telling us that one degree is the high, minus 11 the low. We are definitely staying in that range. 15 degrees though was the top temperature on this day that was in 1988 and minus 32 was the chilliest recorded on record for this day. It was in 1951. The sun rose this morning at 748 and it will set at 544 p.m. Okay, so let's take a look at the national temperatures, the highs for today. Over on the west coast, we're expecting the showers in Victoria and Vancouver. 
highs of 8 degrees in both of those cities. Minus 12 is the high today in Edmonton and minus 7 for Calgary. They are expecting flurries um, in both Edmonton and Calgary today. Now over in the rest of the prairies, it's going to turn into a deep freeze. Minus 22 is the high in Saskatoon, minus 20 in Regina, minus 24 in Winnipeg. Now remember, those are the highs. There's actually a cold warning in effect for southeastern Saskatchewan and into Manitoba. They're gonna drop to minus 40 morning and minus 45 with a wind chill. But over further east, Toronto, they're gonna to see a nice day, two degrees. One degree in, in Montreal, and at, or Montreal's high is zero, and one degree is the high in Ottawa with some scattered clouds in that region. Over in Fredericton, they'll be seeing lots of sunshine with a high of one. Three degrees is the high expected today in Halifax. Minus one expected in Charlottetown with some snow. Now, over in St. John's, their high is zero, but they're expecting a snowfall warning with some ice pellets. They could see up to 15 centimeters of snow today over there in St. John's. There you go, that is your weather. Here's your community calendar. Here's your Bridge City News community calendar. All are welcome to a Valentine's dance being held Friday, February 14th from 7 to 10 p.m. at the Moose Hall in Lethbridge. Music will be provided by Faye Stevens. Admission is $10 per person. A cash prize of $50 and other door prizes will be given away during the evening. Bring the one you love and dance the night away. Come for a fun evening filled with musical entertainment to the Lethbridge Community Brass Choir's Brass Day Concert, featuring international trumpet soloist and jazz artist Rex Richardson on Saturday, February 29th, beginning at 7 p.m. at College Drive Community Church. Tickets are $15 and free for children under 12. Purchase yours today at CASA or visit lcbs.yapcity.com. For details, go to lcbs.ca. Southern Alberta Men's Ministry is hosting Shine Be the Light Men's Conference on March 20th and 21st at University Drive Alliance Church. Emceeing the conference is our very own BCN's Hal Roberts with special guest speaker Pastor Leonard Anderson of Emmanuel Baptist Church in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Tickets are $20, $10 for college students. Price includes food, fun, and fellowship. Purchase yours by visiting eventbrite.ca. For more information, call 403-327-4422. And that's your Bridge City News Community Calendar. Suction cups are one of life's little greatest conveniences, but after a while, they do tend to fall off. Well, today's Daily Life Hack will show you how to get their strength to hold again. Pump a dot of hand soap in the middle of the suction cup. Now press it to the surface as usual and it should stick with plenty of force. It's that simple. And there you go. That's been your daily life hack. Well, nothing is more cozy than cuddling on the couch with your loved one. And for many of us, that loved one has four legs rather than two. BCN stopped by Lethbridge Animal Services and met a little cuddle monkey named Dante. And no, it's not a monkey. Here he is in this week's BCN Pet Feature. This pet feature is brought to you by Aqua Steam Services, carpet, upholstery, and tile care. Hello everyone, today I am here with Dante, a two-year-old neutered male cat that has been vaccinated and microchipped. Uh, this lovely guy was actually found outside our facility in a duct tape storage container left with a note. Um, so he is on the hunt for his forever home. He's a very loving cat and loves affection. So if you're interested in adopting an animal or Dante, make sure to check out our Facebook page at Lethbridge Animal Services or come visit us at the shelter. This pet feature has been brought to you by Aqua Steam Services, carpet, upholstery, and tile care. Experience the clean difference. And speaking of pets, the crowd at Madison Square Garden was chanting for a golden retriever, but Siba, the standard poodle, was named best in show by the Westminster Kennel Club. Bourbon was the Whippet finished second. Uh, Daniel, the golden retriever, was clearly the crowd favorite, but a golden has never won at Westminster. Today, Siba got up early to hit the morning TV shows and will eat lunch at the famed Manhattan restaurant, Sardi's, and then pose on the observation deck of the Empire State Building. So for the 144th annual Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show, we're excited to have 2,500 of the top show dogs coming this year. We have dogs uh, representing all 49 states, or 49 of the 50 states, and we have dogs from 19 other countries. 
A Japanese man has become the world's oldest male at 112 years and 344 days old. Shitsitsu uh, Watanabe received a certificate from the Guinness World World Records today at the nursing home where he lives. He says his secret to longevity is not to get angry and to keep smiling. <laughs> Sounds so, like some very good advice there. Well, you may have noticed that your car insurance rates have gone up. Many insurance companies say that they're losing money. Mark Feehan is with Fair Alberta Injury Regulators. He says, don't believe everything you hear when it comes to insurance companies saying that they're in the red. So far this year, uh, just by way of example, one insurance company, AMA, everybody knows who AMA is, they have made in the first half of this year bef profit before taxes of over $32 million. So, uh, right, so, so how are they losing money? We have said to the insurance industry, if you're saying you're you're losing money, open your books. Let us have a look at your books. And they have just ignored us. Catch the full interview with Mark Feehan from FAIR discussing the insurance industry and where you stand. That's coming up right after this short break.